All right, well, welcome. Uh, one of the big things everybody always says is know your numbers, know your numbers, know your numbers. So I sat down and figured out my numbers. I did this probably my second year doing snow removal. And it was probably around, uh, I want to say, five, six bucks to do a driveway. I was running snow blowers exclusively and snow shovels. I uh, wasn't doing salt at the time. I was running my SUV. I as my six cylinder SUV, it was, you know, so I was using a lot less gas. Uh, I had, you know, I was running a, a fairly new snow blower. And so I didn't have a lot of issues with breakage, but I, I ended up having quite a few because I'm using a residential model to basically do commercial work. But um, it broke down to be about five, six bucks a driveway back then. So I sat down for the first time with my numbers and figured them out. So I based them off of the 2021 20, numbers. And that would have been my first season. My, this would have been, uh, yeah, 2020, 2021. And this would have been my first season with the snowplow. Uh, actually, what I did do is I based them off of straight up. 2021 numbers so it would have been january and then december 2021 would have basically been this the snow entire snow season just to clarify everything for you and i sat down and figured out my numbers based on volumes and everything from that that year now this past year i really couldn't season i really couldn't do that with it very easily because the season stunk um it was just the weather but that weather is what's really waking me up to what's going on with my snow removal. Because I made squat worth of money. I've been struggling all year because of that. Uh, I'm down tremendously. Something like, I think I've, I've managed to pick up a little bit over the summer. But I'm still down 30% for the year from the prior year. And I sat down and tried to figure out my numbers for snow removal. So I, I went and I took that first year that I had the snow plow because those are going to be my most accurate numbers. And I started figuring out based on current market situations what those numbers should be. So like for the price of gas and things like that, I picked the number of $5 a gallon. So know your numbers, know your numbers. So I took the 2022 season, or I didn't do the 2022 season. That was freaking horrific. And it really sucked because I was into YouTube and I'm watching these storms pass through and I'll get storms and it's like a half an inch, one inch. And then I go onto YouTube, these exact same storms go over Lake Michigan and they, they funnel their way into, uh, into the state of Michigan, hit Detroit, or they go a little bit further south and they're hitting Cleveland and that area down there in Ohio and I'm watching Spencer Lawn Care and I'm watching uh, Brian Fullerton's uh, Brian's Lawn Maintenance. Um, I'm watching these these YouTube channels and they're getting hammered like 12 inch storms from the exact same storms that barely left a dusting at where I'm at and it was just really frustrating. I don't blame those guys. They can't control the weather but it was just kind of frustrating to see. Uh, however... I want to talk to you about real numbers. So when I broke down all my numbers at $5 a gallon, how many miles that I actually drove that year in my truck, uh, you're, you're looking at and think, figuring out that my truck gets about 9 miles per gallon with a snowplow on it. You're uh, looking at $651.61 worth of gas for the season. My insurance costs, which I break up because I... I basically I pay it quarterly. I break it up in such a way that so two payments are summer, two payments are winter. So two payments for plowing, two payments for grass is eight hundred and twenty four dollars and fifty cents for the two months. That includes my insurance on the truck, uh, as well as uh, liability for the business. I'm estimating about six hundred dollars a season for the plow cost me about six thousand dollars so yeah but i that's what i'm guesstimating the the cost of the plow you know as far as that equipment the actual truck the price of the truck and i'm estimating eight hundred dollars just to pay off the truck per
person. <clears throat> my truck was really cheap. It was only $4,000. So it was old. And it's still in pretty decent shape. So that, all that saying. Now, one of the other things I figured out was uh, snowblower parts. And just miscellaneous snowblower parts and repairing things like having to replace paddles, uh, wear, wear blades, uh, miscellaneous nuts and bolts that may rattle off and fall off, or fixing a broken handle, replacing a broken handle, or a, sh a snow chute, or having to buy a new carburetor, or whatever, or re fixing that carburetor. I have that estimated at $100. That was $3,061.17 worth of costs at 152 services for the season. Now, keep in mind, I do residential, so I'm doing a lot smaller properties. And a lot of it just depends on the weather and how many you're going to be able to pull off and do. Oh, there's a few other things. Um, the gas for the snowblower, I estimate to be about 25 bucks, as well as uh, shovels. The cost of a shovel. I usually break a shovel every single season. I've been buying expensive shovels recently as well, so they actually have been lasting longer than a season. But I'm estimating sixty bucks for a shovel. Um, like I said, I'm getting really high quality shovels now. So after I break all those numbers down and factor everything out, it is costing me per account twenty dollars and fourteen cents. So at twenty bucks, let's just call it twenty bucks. I am, that's the cost of, of doing business for one property on average. Now, there are some properties that are worth more and less. Like I said, I'm doing residential, there are driveways, but I'm going to get really into the numbers about this. That $20 is very important in all of this. Since I started, I never raised my rates. That's changing this season. But at $20 a service, I have driveways that I take care of for $25. I had this brilliant plan. <laughs> when I first started, you could find the, the guy with the plow, and all he would do is do your driveway. He wouldn't get out of the truck. He wouldn't touch your sidewalks. He would do the driveway for 20 bucks. That was all you could find in my area. So I said, you know what? I'm going to see his price and raise it five bucks and throw in sidewalks. I'm going to get out of the truck and actually clean the sidewalks for an extra five bucks. Can I tell you something? That was the dumbest thing I ever did. I completely changed the industry in my area. Um, now sidewalks are considered to be included. And everybody went off that $25 number. So I'm hoping that if I go in there and put starting at whatever my new rate is, that people are going to jog their, their minds and be like, oh, maybe I should be charging more because Chuck wants to make more money too, right? Getting in mind, if I deal with a standard two-car driveway, everything's pretty much like, I, I, I don't really want to call it tract housing or you know subdivision housing, is primarily what I do. So every single driveway is pretty much the same. It might be a little longer or shorter or something, depending if it's at a cul-de-sac with a turn or something like that. But pretty much every single driveway is going to be roughly the same kind of square footage. So you can kind of charge a flat rate. Okay, you got a two-car driveway. You, this is this much. You got a three-car driveway. It's this much. My rate starting off was $25 for a two-car driveway, including the sidewalk in front of the house, um, as long as it wasn't a corner lot or something extensive or you know really big walkway up to the house and um that was my my going rate starting off and, it, and i've kept that rate i did that rate last year i never raised my prices in all the years and i've been doing snow longer than i've been doing this year i realized just how much i'm spending um i have driveways that i'm doing for 25 dollars and I'm spending $20 to do them. This isn't including wages. This isn't including profits for the business. That hasn't been added in yet. I'm making five bucks doing all the labor on a driveway. It's not what I got. That's not what I got into business for. It takes me about a half hour to do a driveway. I do two driveways. That's 10 bucks an hour. I can go to over to, uh, 
Walmart or I can go over to McDonald's or I can go over anywhere and make more than 10 bucks an hour getting whatever job. I don't need to remove snow for that. It's kind of funny because I started looking at ads for snow plow, people doing snow plow. The going rate for a someone per hour doing snow removal is like 31, 32 bucks an hour. I was mentioning this to my wife. I was like, well, you're looking to, to change jobs? You know, give up and, you know. I'm like, at this rate? Yeah, I should. Um, and what I'm charging? Yeah, I should. Because I'm making like 10 bucks an hour at that rate. So, and then we got into this big discussion about, okay, if I add in, you know, my rate, you know, of at $31 or $32 an hour for snow plowing, what I would like to get as an owner of the company, you know, like my, my little 10% profit or whatever, I it would be on average $46.98 a driveway. Now, this does fluctuate a little bit. Like I said, I'm saying my cheap driveway is 25 bucks. If I was doing a three-car driveway, it would be 35 bucks. If it was a different, you know, strange driveway or whatever added on, if it was a two-car driveway, garage with a pull-off that would have been 35 or if it's a three car with an extra pull-off that would have been more and you know I, I varied depending on the size of the driveway and everything else uh and then there was an upcharge for snow over six inches that's where i was actually making my money is in that upcharge i can't depend on snow getting over six inches to make my money i need to be able to make money at two inches that's another change i'm making this season if the trigger is going to start at two inches or less if you want it more then you're gonna to have to find another service um i had one cust i had two customers i tried changing it last year i had two customers one of them was kind of a pain because of that and um i decided to just expunge him i guess you could say tell him that that's what it is and i'm not going to be servicing at that rate and he said okay i'm going to go find another service i said okay have a nice day thank you good luck um, and then the other one was, is it been a long-term customer? So I kind of grandfathered it in and gave her a warning last season. Hey, next season, I'm doing two, two, two inches or less. I'm not going to start at four inches. And she's like, okay, you know, and I did, took care of her that season. And then this season, I'm sticking to my guns on that. It kind of stinks. She's one of my first customers and she's also a Mo customer. So if, if, but she's going to do what she wants to do. In order for me to make money, that's what I, I need to do. I need to start at that two-inch trigger. What I would like to do is try to get an average of forty-six ninety-eight per driveway. So I have to figure out how much I'm going to charge for that two-car driveway. It's going to go up. And, I mean, I was having discussions of my with my wife about what I should charge for that particular driveway, that, that small driveway. I was looking at, like, 36 bucks for that driveway. She's like, oh, that's way too much. Oh, no, 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 that's way too much. And I, I, I talked to her. It's like, are you sure you want to raise your rates at all? I go, and I, and I told her, you know, being busy does not mean I'm making money. It's costing me 20 bucks to do that driveway. And I'm making 25. It takes me a half an hour. It's 10 bucks an hour. I can go to Jewel, which is like a grocery store, and get make more money than that per hour. No, I think she was looking at me like maybe that's what you should do. She's concerned about me losing customers where I'm concerned about making money. Because you're busy does not mean you're making money. As you can see from our numbers here. Now, good news is that this is these are numbers from that I'm projecting for this year based on current gas prices and things like that. So it's not like I haven't been able to make money in the past. But if I don't do something drastic with my pricing, I'm not going to be able to make the kind of money I would like or even come close to it. I don't think I'm going to have the same kind of uh, resolve with this re increase with my snow customers as I did with my mowing customers. My mowing customers, they basically, I, I, I did the increase. I gave them ample notification to drop me or find someone else if they wanted to. And um, they all kept me. I, was, I, w I kept them at 100% and actually got more. Snow, I don't know if it's going to be the same. Um, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to keep a hundred percent and then I have to look at it because last year I did do a rate increase on new customers, 
so I have to figure out those new customers that I get that got the rate increase and then the old customers and maybe adjust those rates for the new customers a little bit so that we start balancing things out. I don't know what I'm going to do exactly, but obviously rates are going to have to go up. When I'm paying 20 bucks and charging $25 for a driveway, there's really no room in there for me. Maybe for you, five bucks is, hey, hunky-dory, great. And maybe you're you're doing less costs, but providing more work, so you're making more money at twenty twenty five bucks a driveway. Hey, great! But I have to look at all my numbers and say, yeah, that ain't gonna work. That ain't gonna fly. Uh, I am providing a higher level of service, and I need to charge for that higher level of service. Otherwise, being busy doesn't make me money. But I need to make money. Even when there's two inches of snow, I don't have to. I shouldn't have to wait till six inches to make money, and I shouldn't have to depend on those larger driveways to compensate for those smaller driveways. They say know your numbers. I, I mean, if you don't have the numbers to, to crunch, I guess you can use those numbers. That the twenty dollar per two car driveway for the, your standard tract housing or your subdivision housing kind of a thing, which is pretty much everything I got around my area. Or um, if you don't have all the numbers to crunch, but if you do have the numbers to crunch, crunch those numbers. Figure them out. Figure out how much you're spending in gas. Like I said, what I figured out was I keep my mileage for tax purposes because you're going to get like 16 cents per mile for, you know, off your taxes or for your vehicle deductions. So I had all that recorded. I just looked at what it was marked snow, added all those numbers up, figured out how many miles I drove. I know I get about nine miles to the gallon with the plow on it because it tells me in a little display on the truck and so I factored out you know at five dollars a gallon which I don't think is unruly of a number even though I know it is down trust me after election the election happens in November everything's going to shoot right back up I think five bucks might actually be too low of a number for gas estimates and that that's what I kind of threw out there and used just kind of trying to guesstimate what's going to be happen with fuel insurance is really easy you know i just need to take my total annual insurance bill cut it in half that's what goes to snow the plow is a little bit more tricky because i have to figure out how many years do i plan on you know having that plow and the extended life and everything else about how much that's going to cost as well as the truck that was one of the other things um I did, I did pull numbers for salt, how much I was spending on salt, and um, I bought a new salt spreader. So, But I haven't quite figured out how much I do with that. I don't do a lot of salt. I think I might do maybe 10 salt services all season. A lot of times I'm giving it away just to get rid of the salt at the end of the season. Um, so it's really... Salt is not a huge... Salt, you know, that the salt is not a huge thing when you deal with residential. It's mainly commercial that deals with the salts, salt and the salt spreaders and everything else. So when you're dealing with residential, all you need is a little push salt spreader, you know, like a, you would use to fertilize your lawn with, per se, and bags of salt, and you can handle that. But yeah, those are my numbers for snow, and I don't know where they're going to go, but they're good. I know they're going to go up. So that's going to be kind of interesting. Um, and just, you know, dealing with my personal life and dealing with my not-so-silent, silent partner, my wife, um, you know, I'm trying to get her in the mind of this is how you run a business. And she's still thinking about, in terms of chuck in a truck kind of ideas, where being busy is making money. My rates are getting raised this year. So until then, well, I'll see you next time. Which I don't know what 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 who wants me? Uh, it's actually a text. Okay, just somebody responding to me doing something. Hey, what is it? What am I on a? One of those uh, massive text calls. Anyways, I'm just going to ignore that one.